Hey guys, I'm um, just kind of setting this up as a project vlog for today. Um, I've got two projects that I'm working on. Uh, the first one, I'm doing some sort of drum options for a friend of mine. He's just sort of got a rough demo um, of a song and he just doesn't really, he's trying to figure out which direction he should go with drums. Um, so I'm going to put together a few options for him. The second one is I'm working on uh, the first video in a new YouTube series um, where I'm going to do some covers of songs that are completely done with acoustic instruments. So um, it's going to be a really fun project. I've had it in the works for a while and uh, I'm excited to finally be putting it together. Um, both of these songs require some drums and uh, I'm having to be a little bit creative because I've sold my drum set. I don't really have room for it and I hadn't used it in a long time, so sold that. Um, but I still do have quite a few drums just sitting around. So we're gonna see what we can, what we can do with those. Um, so yeah, gonna bring you guys along. So one universal rule, if you've got a drum and it's got holes in it, someone's gonna put a drumstick in there. So, gotta take off the drum head, pull out the drum, the drumstick, so we can use it. Just as a quick note, if you are replacing a drum head like this, I find it really useful to make sure the lugs stay in the same position. <clears throat> that way you run less of a chance of stripping the threads. I want to run down the street with the sun on my back and the wind on my face with you. I want to dance to your beat and never look back and do it all. Yeah. I like a little bit of ring. So there we go. Drums ready to go. All right, so um, I'm working with an artist named Chad Boney. And uh, he's sort of a, um, I guess, Americana, Christian kind of worship artist. And... Um, so he sent me this track, and it's just sort of, it's him and an acoustic guitar. Um, he put in a, uh, a pad sound just to sort of fill in some space. And um, he wasn't quite sure what to do with drums. So um, what I've already done here is I've already um, kind of come into Logic Pro. I ran the... Um, adaptive uh, tempo thing because you know he just was playing guitar um, so he wasn't playing to a click but I ran the adaptive tempo just so I could get it to where the uh, I could use an auto drummer just to sort of get in the ballpark so what I ended up doing was um, using one of the brush kits I'm a big fan of that sort of marching cadence style snare drum but to sort of appeal kind of to that Americana country type of uh, sound. Um, I've got the uh, auto drummer doing that same sort of thing with brushes. And uh, here, I'll let you hear a little bit of this. How many times have I let you so yeah, as you can hear, um, it's just a really, really basic thing. But again, I'm just trying to give him concepts of where he might take it later. Um, you know, get a get a drummer in the studio and kind of work that way. So. Um, I'm gonna play around, I think, with uh, a couple of things that I have out here in my home studio. 
So the first thing we're gonna play with is this. Um, this is an octa cajon from uh, Latin Percussion. Um, I really like this, or octa snare, yeah, octa snare cajon. Um, it's just really kind of a cool, um, And it just kind of gets into that, um, I don't know, gets that uh, cajon kind of feeling, but without having to hunch over a box, which which is really nice. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring my microphone over and just try it and see what happens. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you can probably hear from all the ringing in here that this room is not acoustically treated at all. So... Um, um, that's one major challenge that I'm running into with anything that I record. But again, this is just, this is just concepts that I can kind of pass on to him. And, uh, and then he can decide which direction he wants to go. And either I can, you know, continue working with him on that, or, you know, I'm just helping him to get past, you know, a, a little bit of, uh, creative writer's block. So, um, uh, I'm always always happy to help with that. So I'm going to get this mic'd up and uh, then we will do some recording. Okay, so I've got this mic'd up and uh, this is a Rode NT1. Um, <laughs> I have a couple of mantras that I tend to work by. Um, the first is that easiest is best, okay, at least to start. So, um, the NT1 already hooked up. I leave this hooked up all the time in my studio, so that way anything that I need to record, whether it's vocals or an instrument or anything, um, you know, I can do that very, very quickly. Um, you know, it might not be the best sound, but what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to record this and then hear it and then know if it's gonna work or not. And, for what I do, nine times out of ten, this mic is fine. And, you know, it can sit in the mix just fine. I don't have to worry about, um, I don't worry about the minutia. Because, um, my second mantra is that done is better than perfect. And, uh, too often we get into this trap of really trying to dig down and get everything 100% perfect. And when we do that, sometimes we just, we don't get done. We get this pile. I know I have a pile of projects that are sitting unfinished on my hard drive. And a lot of that is just because I couldn't get the specific details done to my liking. And so I've really adopted and leaned into this idea that done is better than perfect because you're never going to get it 100% perfect. And if you keep pushing um, for that, you run the risk of never finishing and never putting your music out into the world or at least never having it done so that you can look back on it and say, that is finished, it's good work. So anyway, um, so I'm gonna be trying to record the Octa Cajon with the NT1. Um, I'll listen back to it, probably for what I'm doing for Chad, this is gonna be totally sufficient. I mean, I'm just giving him ideas. Uh, I'm gonna do that here, I'm gonna do that on the djembe, I'm gonna do that on my bass drum. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, easy is best, easy is best. It's here, it's plugged in, it's ready to go, you know. Maybe it would sound better with an SM57. I don't know. Maybe it would sound better with a small small diaphragm condenser. I don't know. Frankly, I don't care because I would rather have it recorded than to be digging through microphones just pondering in my head, oh my gosh, is this going to work? Is this what's going to be best? And, you know, well, I, I don't want to mess with all that. I want to record it, then hear it, and only if there's a major problem will I go back and change the microphone. So, anyway, uh, let's jump in.
Okay, so listening to that, I know I'm kind of, I'm in the right ballpark for where I want to be, you know, as far as what I'm playing. I'm going to adjust um, the position of the drum here just a little bit <clears throat> and uh, rotate. Um, I want to try to get a little bit more of that tone. Okay, so now that I've got that done, um, I'm gonna take a pass with the djembe. Just kind of see, it'll probably be pretty much the same exact part. Um, just play it on the djembe. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just a different color, just to give him some more options of what might work. Um, so let's take a pass with that. So again, as I am listening back to it, there's nowhere near the warmth that I hear in the room. Um, and I think a lot of that just has to do with mic placement. And so I'm tempted to change the mic, move it around. I don't know. I think I will. We'll try it. Okay, so I have moved the mic. It is now right here. <clears throat> Um, down low, just off camera. And uh, I've moved it so that way, A, it's not gonna get quite as much of the slap of the uh, of the djembe, and also hopefully it's gonna get a little bit more of that low body kind of a sound. Um, yeah, so we're gonna try this one more time with that. Um, I'm gonna keep that first take just because I like some of the things I was doing there. Um, hopefully it'll be a little bit even more polished this time around now that I know what I want to do. So, through the speakers, it's hard to hear the, the body um, of what's going on. Um, I can hear a lot better through the headphones. Um, but yeah, I like this a lot better. But once again, um, I wanted to try the easy way first before stressing out about it. Because again, nine times out of 10, the easy way works just fine, okay? And especially as you go through and you do more recording and you learn more things about what works with your instruments and in your space, you know, you'll figure out even more ways to simplify the process and, and make it easy. And uh, so yeah, um, I'm still learning this mic. This is a relatively new mic to me, so I'm still learning it. Um, I'm still learning this space. I've only been in this space actually working for a couple of months. Um, and even still, it's not anywhere close to where I want it. But, um, you know, just just keep working and, and I would much rather be spending time recording and listening back and making changes than to spend time in my head thinking about, oh my goodness, where would I, where should I mic the best? What's the best mic? Let's go on to an internet forum and ask that question of where should I mic my djembe? And, you know, before you know it, you've wasted four hours and you've got nothing to show for it. Um, whereas, you know, it took me three minutes to listen back and realize, ooh, I didn't like that mic placement, let's try this. Another three minutes, boom, now I'm in a mic placement that I like with a take that's pretty okay, especially for what I'm doing here. Six minutes, and I'm done. <laughs> I haven't had to chase anything on, on the internet. So, um, that would be my advice um, when it comes to this, you know, easiest 
is usually the best. What I'm going to do for this last part is I'm going to pull out my uh, my my bass drum and uh, we're going to try something maybe a little bit different. So be right back. Hey, so welcome back. Um, I've got this bass drum. Um, I've got it up here on a stand. Um, I'm using this like a gong drum, and a gong drum is just like a really huge, um, huge tom, basically. And this one, it's got a great, like this, wah, kind of a sound to it. Here we go. Um, the microphone I've got just here off camera, it's up a little higher. It's not aiming directly at the, uh, at the bass drum. It's kind of aiming more at me. Because I want to try to get more of the boom and less of the, uh, you know, the attack and the snap of, uh, of the head. So that's what I'm going to try to get after here. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so, um, I think, unless I come up with anything brilliant in the next couple of uh, minutes, I think I'm gonna call that good on what I've got for Chad. Um, I'm going to export what I've got, send it to him, and then we'll move on to the next project of the morning. I am... Oh, hey, I'm a little bit ahead of schedule, which is awesome. So, I'll be right back. 